be honest, like I still have trouble with that. Like we're yeah. taking we're taking a break from playing shows for the year because I'm 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 having trouble identifying that right now because like the pressure of writing an album and trying to you know live up to standards and expectations like makes that difficult yeah. and it changes that and ultimately for me um like for music ultimately i think you have to ask yourself like why you want to do it and like you said if the end goal is just to have fun and it's just to enjoy yourself like then you can't really fail there's like you're gonna fall somewhere along the spectrum and as long as you're having fun like it doesn't matter where that whether that's professional playing for thousands of people every night or whether you're some person who just like plays guitar in their free time in their room by themselves as long as you're having a good time that's what matters What's up, everybody? It's the Poorly Edited Podcast. We're coming at you live from WXLV, the X at L-Tri-C's main campus. And today is a very special, special episode of the show. I'm very excited to bring to you a guest that uh, uh, we're a very big fan of here at the show, have been for a very long time. I'm very excited to uh, get to sit down and talk to him today. I'm Chandler Davis. I'm Patrick Lilly. My name is Coffee Guy. And we are here with... Eric Butler from Mom Jeans, vocalist, guitarist, t- trombone player, everything. Dreamboat. Dreamboat. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing, man? What's up? Hey, everybody. Thank you so Good much morning. for taking some time out of your day to do this. I really appreciate it. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> Ain't got much going on, so. <laughs> you guys just got off tour, right? Uh, yeah, we did um, a handful of shows with Motion City Soundtrack, so that was cool. Oh, that's so Been awesome. home for about a week from that. Yeah, it was fun. What was that like playing with, getting to play with them? Because they're a, they're a bit older than you guys in this in that scene. I'll so be like, um, I'll be seasoned. totally honest. We didn't get to hang out with them a mm-hmm. whole lot. Um, they're just like a little bit older, and they'd have um, the kind of different priorities um, from us. Like we still very much like. I don't know. I wouldn't say partying is the right word, but we like, like, I don't know. I'm not, I don't like not getting wasted or anything, but just like, yeah, I like hanging out. out and having a good time yeah. with my friends. Yeah. Um, and we can be a little bit loud and a little bit obnoxious at times. And I don't know if they really uh, vibed with that totally. Um, so yeah, but the shows are really cool. Um, their fans were really, really receptive um, cool. to us, which is, I think, Honestly, to us, like, that's the only thing we're really worried about, like, if yeah. and when we do, like, a support tour, like, if people are going to be open-minded, and if um, we think that, like, us being there is, like, going to matter a little bit, um, and it seemed like it did, so it was fun, it was exciting for us, and it was, it's always, I mean, it's, they're bigger venues than we could get to play on our own, so that's always a, always a plus, too. Yeah, no, that's awesome, that sounds awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know... You talk about getting to play at uh, bigger venues than you're used to. I remember we actually saw you play at the Bethlehem Steel Stacks in PA when you were in town on one of your last tours. And that show I, was crazy. Yeah, I remember you saying when you started that show, like I think you addressed the crowd. You're like, I don't know how we're playing here, but it's very cool. <laughs> yeah. so let's please not ruin it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's so real. I felt bad for the people that were like smoking during the P Daddy set. I was like, "What are you guys <laughs> doing? Like, you oh, can't be that. doing." Uh, this is just... like a place where they should be holding a business meeting or an <laughs> educational <laughs> forum of some kind, not a punk rock show. But I don't know. That was the most scared I've ever seen anyone in my life. I like, think it's fair to say that uh, just we, I don't the... think we were asked to back after that. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a shame. That's their loss. Uh, but, uh, well. I'm just glad you didn't remember because we we actually had seen you before you you went on. I think you were in line to get a hot dog, and we just kind of like assaulted you. Uh, with, oh, with, for sure. With with, with, <laughs> with talking, and uh, we were pretty cringe. So, and I think you had mentioned you didn't remember that when we exchanged emails. So that's good. We're I think really I remember good. that interaction happening, but I don't remember the cringe. So oh, that's that's. Well, I think that there. whole night was pretty cringe to begin with. So it was. Uh, <laughs> It all just kind of blended in with the rest of the night, okay. and capping off with Joel getting into a, like a an argument with like the lady who was like taking our merch money, and he ended up paying her like seven hundred dollars in singles, and like made her count it all out. Oh my god, it was great! Oh, that's, that's incredible. Amazing. Wait, he had seven hundred dollars in singles on him. Uh, yeah. How fat was his wallet? Like, how did he fit that in his pants? 
Joel, Joel stays Joel stays strapped. He keeps the fanny pack on him. Bro. Oh, oh wow. yeah, you're Just, right. I don't think I've ever seen a picture without him in a fanny pack. That's a great point. Yeah, he keeps he keeps like the entire tour's worth of money on him at all times. <laughs> that's a fanny pack report. That's that's it's uh, the only only way to only way that he's fully certain. <laughs> that's financial security. <laughs> Are fanny packs punk rock now? Is that a thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. What's up? I said, our, our uh, f- whoever just spoke, I can't hear you very well. So I'm oh, sorry nice. about that. Okay. okay. That's, pro- that's for sure our fault. <laughs> <laughs> We've been having a problem with that mic in particular recently. So that's awesome. Um, cool. But what was the question? I'm happy to answer oh, it. Our um, fanny packs punk rock, yeah. I think, was very the question. Important. Oh, yeah. Sick. Yeah. yeah fanny okay. packs are, are. Dude, every punk rock band has fanny packs now. Really? Is that true? That's a trend. Oh yeah. Am I behind oh, yeah. the wave? Oh, he's like, oh, we yeah. sell fanny packs. We sell mom jeans fanny well, packs. I one. I guess. Uh, that's it. That's, that's well, they're I fun. Mean. I used to have a Power Rangers fanny pack when I was a kid. That's sick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I was right. never about fanny packs, and I'm hella about fanny packs now. I don't know. <laughs> I, I have, like, a lot of stuff. I got, like, my phone in my wallet. I don't like having stuff in my pocket, so. Bro. That's a good, because then you can't forget it. If it's all in the fanny pack, you just grab the fanny pack. Exactly. It it's like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I, I do love your, uh, exactly. your look on stage, because it's, like, really, uh, it just seems, like, you do I don't play like, with a fanny pack, but. I like, like the short shorts, cool. though. Yeah. Like, the shorter shorts. I, it just, like, <laughs> the, the freedom of movement it looks like it gives is incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's the whole point. It's kind of like uh, we all dress as if we're, like, working out. It's Because that's kind of, like, what it is. Bart um, is at so least hard. for me, I want to be, yeah, I want to be comfy. <laughs> Sam wants to be comfy. Bart wants to be comfy. I don't know. Austin wants to look cool. So Austin <laughs> can look cool. Yeah, yeah. He's, like, mostly but behind the I want to be comfy. Anyway, anyway. Right? Yeah, exactly. He's sitting down, so it doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> Everybody's probably more interested in like how crazy his drumming is than what his what he's wearing at the time too. So that's a good. I watched a video about of a camera on him drumming. I don't remember what he was wearing. I remember his drumming though because it was sick. Oh yeah, he was a ab- He's an absolute fucking monster. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. No, so, uh, don't worry about it. Um, so let's talk about your early days uh, going to UC Berkeley, where you met Austin. Is that true? Yes. And so, yeah, we um yeah. And so you guys put together your first EPs and started to really find your, started to find your niche. But before that, you guys were band kids in high school, and that's where you learned oh, the yeah. trombone. And yeah. and so that's really your roots. Yeah. So, I mean, all of us were band kids. Um, I'm not, I think Bart was in marching band for a little while too. Like he was in the pit orchestra. Nice. Um, but all of us come from like music program backgrounds yeah. um, in school. Bart was very, Bart specifically was very early on to like kind of start doing DIY and start playing in bands while like he was in high school, um, which is super cool. Um, but, and I dabbled in, all, we all dabbled in that a little bit, but we were all definitely like hardcore music program kids like i was drum major the marching band um in high school um and like i did marching band in college um and yeah it was it was a really really big part of my life and that's kind of like that's how i got introduced to music anyway yeah. and i got introduced to diy through that because like kids that were in the marching band in my high school had a ska band and yes. i went to go see their ska band and that's how i got started in all of this oh that's crazy and so has yeah. that helped you with that background, bringing that to this type of music now? Has that helped you to having that background, that knowledge base, that is what most people maybe assume is not as related? You know, like the 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 relation there might not be as clear, but is it? <laughs> I think I think in in maybe not the ways that you would expect. Uh-huh. I think technical like application. I don't think there's a whole lot of like music theory or like anything about like physically playing any instruments or like reading music that really um, transferred a whole lot. Obviously, there's like general knowledge, yeah. like chord shapes and yeah. like basic basic absolute basic music theory that everybody I think kind of has who plays music has an idea of. Um, but I think for me it was more um, like the work ethic that I learned being in like the high school band program. Like we were all really lucky, like myself and Sam specifically, like the area that we grew up in, like the Bay area in California has a lot of really, really awesome band programs. Um, And we both had really good band directors. And I had like a really great private trombone teacher 
Um, and they all just instilled a lot of like core values in me for like working really hard and kind of like teaching me, I guess, like the scientific method of how, of like approaching, like how I want to accomplish my goals yeah. in music and like what ways to do that and how do I think approach a problem? Like, how do I want to learn how to play this instrument or how do I want to apply, um, you know, trying to create this sort of group or start this kind of band, you know, how do I, how do I, um, quantify the kind of sound I'm going for? Um, how do I, you know, make that a reality mm -hmm. for myself yeah. and have it not seem like a crazy, like daunting, impossible task. So I think coming from that background, I guess like maybe starting a band and like being in a band just off the bat seemed a lot closer than maybe it does for most people. Right. That makes it seemed sense. A lot more, it seemed a lot more tangible and it was like, I, I know so many people that are just like, oh, I want to be in a band. I, I just don't know where to start. And, so, um, and I feel like think I already had start? that starting point. I already had that starting point, mm -hmm. so I'm not exactly sure. Right. I think for me, like that, I think I think being like having a really, really good education and being really lucky and having a really great high school band program and having a really great college band program mm -hmm. um, was something that made that possible for me. And I think that's something that people honestly don't want to acknowledge and people don't want to talk about because they don't think it's like cool and they don't I think agree. that the two are really related. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's why it's so important too to like pay attention to the fact that like we're losing band programs and we're losing art programs. Say, yeah, bro. In so you're saying that, uh, because I mean, like, people are still going to find art. Kids, kids are going to still start playing guitar, man. Like they're still going to find the minor threat yeah. records. They're still going to find green day. They're still going to find like MCR. Like that's still going to happen for them. But as far as like making that a reality and being able to see themselves in a position where they're creating that music and they're doing that and it, and, and it's good enough to be worth performing in front of people, yeah. um, specifically for, um, you know, the less privileged members of our community, you know, like women, people of color, queer people, um, people who already don't see themselves in those positions. Yeah. Um, I think it's super important to like have that education and well, it, that doesn't mean it's like impossible to to do it without it. Obviously, there's so many people that have no formal music training um, that become incredible, like famous musicians. But I think for me, it, that's like a really accessible way to make it so just like easy and like not seem as hard to people. But it was also you know, like I was lucky and I went to a school that had a really good program. Not everybody has that. Um, I guess like. For yourself by seeking out music education in the ways that you can, you know, and take lessons um, from people around you. Um, if you person, you know, be like in your 20s and like asking your friend to teach you how to play a guitar, so, uh, that's uh, like my buddy taught me how to play my first few worlds on guitars, and I took uh, Guitar Tab's Ultimate Life yeah. from there. Oh, <laughs> Just, yeah. like, I'm, I'm a figured it out that website. <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't take like formal guitar lessons because it didn't make me feel good. Like it made me, did made me feel like it was going to be homework mm -hmm. and I didn't want that. I just wanted to um, explore. And like, to be honest, like Austin, our drummer, like he taught me most of the things that I know um, yeah, I, about the way that I play guitar now. Haven't you, um, I think you, I've heard you say before that he used to write like complex guitar parts and then he dumbed them down so you could play them. Exactly. I, I yeah. In interview, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. And he just, he had an ear and he knew, he like, he knew how to noodle. And I like, yeah. did, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to do that. And like Austin didn't like teach me how to play guitar, but he taught me how to noodle on guitar and he taught me how to yeah. like riff and he taught me just how to like come up with ideas. And that's like, I guess that's something kind of hard to explain, like how you can get someone else to do that for themselves. But mm -hmm. it like learning how to just enjoy making sound out of something and not even having to have a song, but just like, oh, that sounds cool. Or like that chord sounds cool. And getting enjoyment out of that, taking it away from like, oh, I have to like play a song or oh, I have to play this or whatever. For me, it made it seem a lot more accessible and it made it seem a lot more fun. And from there, like that was the foundation of like where my guitar playing came from. And after a while, it just became a matter of practice. Yeah. And you know, realizing like what a pinch harmonic is and deciding that like, I want to <laughs> learn how to do those. So then yeah. I practice pinch harmonics or realizing that like Sam wrote a riff for the band that I want to play, but I can't because I'm physically incapable of doing it and practicing the things that I need to practice to get up to that point. Um, so it's always like my being a good guitar player has always been driven or like trying to be a good enough guitar player has always been driven by like being in this band and trying to be a good enough vocalist has always been driven by just like trying to be good enough to be in this band. And that for me, for me has always, and so like having the project 
to kind of like guide that has been really helpful, Mm -hmm. especially since like graduating college and high school, I don't have that structural like music education in my life Mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I like have to create it for myself Um, and that's, and that's fun. Yeah. And that's, and that's, what's cool for me is just like learning how to break that all down and just like get a lot of enjoyment out of just like writing stuff that sounds cool. And Austin did that for me. Like he taught me how to do that. He taught me how to like, I don't, I don't know exactly how, (laughs) <laughs> but through through just hanging out a lot and uh, being not sober together for <laughs> a lot of nights hanging out, um, you know, um, something for me just clicked with that. And it seemed in- inevitable that we were going to write songs together because half of the songs that I was writing were with chord progressions or with riffs that Austin had written and he had taught me. Wow. Um, because at the time, like, those are really the only things that I knew how to play. Other than, like, Scott chords like real big fish songs so. i think i know how he did it i mean as silly as it sounds you were just having fun we mentioned before that music lessons you felt like homework i think that's a serious yeah. i think there's a serious problem that we have in the way we teach people how to play music and how to play instruments yeah. where we're mm-hmm. not teaching them to have fun first we're teaching them stuff that's important and that they need to learn too early and it's too complicated I've heard it described yeah. once as like you don't teach a baby how to spell milk before it knows what milk is. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. You know, it's it's like a superpower to be able to sit there and be like struggling through a piece of theory and have a yeah. whole time and then just stop and then just have fun for a little bit and then come back to it. If you can't do that, yeah. you're just gonna stop playing and you're never gonna play the guitar or whatever it is you want to do. Oh, play. exactly. You're gonna be one of those people who's oh it was too hard, I just couldn't yeah. Yeah. figure it out. Like I wasn't I wasn't enjoying it. And like, I'll be honest, like I still have trouble with that. Like we're taking, we're taking a break from playing shows for the year because I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble identifying that right now because like the pressure of writing an album and trying to, you know, live up to standards and expectations like makes that difficult and it changes that. And ultimately for me, um, like for music, ultimately, I think you have to ask yourself like why you want to do it. And like you said, if the end goal is just to have fun, and it's just to enjoy yourself, like, then you can't really fail. There's like, you're going to fall somewhere along the spectrum. And as long as you're having fun, like, it doesn't matter whether that's professional playing for thousands of people every night or whether you're some person who just, like, plays guitar in their free time in their room by themselves. As long as you're having a good time, that's what matters. And I think that's a lot of people, like, they don't think about that. Like, they start a band because because they want to be cool or they think it's going to make them friends or they think that they, you know, can make money doing it or some other reason. And if that's the goal, then I think music is going to be really, really hard for you to figure out. And I think like learning how to play that guitar is going to be hard because I don't think you're going to be able to know how to have fun playing music. Like, and if, and if being in a band or if playing music is a means to any end other than having fun, um, and, you're gonna you're setting yourself up for a lot more disappointment i think or you're potentially like i don't think you should even start a band or like try to like play an instrument if you don't think that it's going to be fun yeah. um so wow. and that might sound cynical and you no, know, i mean i get what you're ultimately from, music though. is for everybody but it it is what it is and you know like we have so much like little time on this planet it's like i don't think anybody should be doing anything that's like doesn't make them happy and that they don't want to do so it's like why would you learn an instrument or why would you want to be in a band if it doesn't if it's not just like fun yeah. for you. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's my take on that anyway. That's crazy. Especially when you're, you're choosing the career that you've chosen. I mean, you can speak about this more than I can. Just, just breaking through in your local scene is so difficult. Mm-hmm. And that's such a huge hurdle. And then to then break through and then become a touring game musician, just getting through to that point is like impossible. And then, I mean, so many bands come and go that if you're doing it because you think you're going to be, you know, a superstar and really rich, it's just, and, and having fun isn't the most, like the reason why you're doing it, you're just going to burn out and it's not going to go yeah. well. Wow. Yeah, totally. That's crazy. And so you talked a little bit about your album that you're working on and you guys have tweeted about it. I've heard some, some new songs <laughs> you, are, you guys are working on from uh, your concerts and stuff. A lot of phone footage that I've had to listen to these songs. <laughs> But uh, and that album's called Sweet Tooth, and but, that's the plan. Yeah, but, yeah that's the plan. <laughs> that's currently the plan. And so, but you talked a little bit about that. I think it's interesting what you said about trying to meet these expectations. Like, I mean, you've gone from just noodling around in college with your friends 
to now ha- ha- even having expectations where there were none before in what would seem to be, I would imagine, a pretty short span of time. You know, where now it's like, yeah. okay, we're putting out our third album. What are we going to do? Yeah. What's this going to sound like? Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to make you more nervous. I'm sure you already are nervous about it. But I mean, I, 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 from what I've heard, it's amazing. And it sounds like you guys are really transcending into some new territory that sounds um, that sounds awesome and, and so full and developed. And uh, I'm really excited for it. I know a lot of people are. But so what are you, what are you, how are you kind of moving through that and navigating that? at this stage? Um, well, it's, it's tough. There's, I mean, I think like the biggest tangible change that I can identify right now is the fact that like best buds and puppy love were albums that for the most part, I kind of like wrote myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, obviously like Austin had like really, really integral parts and all of those things like I can like off the top of my head, like he wrote the riff for 40 hands. Like he wrote the chord progression for Movember. Nice. Um, you know, he wrote um, the riff for glamorous. Like there's so much, there's so many songs that just like wouldn't exist if he hadn't come up with them. Like he wrote shred Cruise, like all of this stuff. Um, and, but as far as like the lyrical content and like taking the songs from like just being a riff to like being an actual song, like I did all that like myself and I don't like, I'm not doing that anymore. Like with this album, like it's very collaborative. Um, like Bart is like an integral part of the songwriting in this album. Sam is an integral part of the songwriting in this album. Austin is an integral part of the songwriting in this album. And I'm, I'm really, really excited about that because it's helping me get a lot of my joy back. Um, because it's, it's, I don't know. I'm not trying to write this album for anybody like other than me. Uh-huh. If that makes any sense. Um, I feel like I wrote best buds for myself. Um, I wrote best buds, um, because it was the album that like I wanted to hear. Um, it was the album that helped me voice the feelings that I feel felt like I couldn't voice in a normal context. Um, and we put it out and with no expectations and people responded to it. And that's really cool. And for me, I like playing shows with my friends. So we kept touring and we kept doing all that stuff. Um, because I like playing shows with my friends. And then we did Puppy Love because it felt like we had to put out another album if we wanted to keep touring and keep playing shows. That's crazy. Um, and I think in, in hindsight, I think I allowed myself to get like kind of caught up in the, oh, we want to like sign to a label mm-hmm. and oh, we want to do this because uh, we were fresh out of college trying really, really hard not to get jobs. Um, and trying to tour and trying to, you know, for me, trying to prove to my girlfriend and to prove to my family that it was like real and it was happening and that I could do it. Um, and there's a certain amount of this like DIY stuff that just like, it doesn't work, um, unless you just get in the van and do it. Um, and you need time to just get in the van and do it. And with that, there's like a lot of risk involved. Um, and you look for a guarantee and you look for a promise. You look for somebody to come in and tell you like, Hey, if you just keep doing what you're doing, like we're going to pay your bills and you're going to be, you're going to be okay. Um, and I think there was a piece of us that was looking for that. And puppy love was kind of supposed to be, or we allowed ourselves, I allowed myself to get caught up and kind of like put out an album faster than I was ready to put out an album Mm -hmm. and kind of just like write something to get it out and, I didn't really think about whether or not I liked the songs that much. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think about whether or not I resonated with what I was writing. Um, I thought more about whether other people would. Um, And that's like, that's not a headspace that I want to be in anymore. Um, Because ultimately, like, I love sharing music and I love sharing my music with other people. But it's, um, it's, it's mine, you know what I mean? And like, I have to do it for me. And I have to, um, I have to ultimately like be selfish and think about the things that I want to think about. And I tried way too hard to make an album that sounded not the way I ultimately wanted it to sound. And I think I just like put all of these like really weird, impossible restraints on myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I allowed communication between myself and Austin to deteriorate. I allowed, you know, communication between myself and Bart to deteriorate and, um, you know, everybody was trying to be really polite and not step on anybody's toes. Um, and I think with this album, like, I just, I'm not thinking about any of that stuff 
anymore. Obviously, in the back of my mind, I would really like to have um, new music out as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, but the reality of the situation is like I'm not gonna. We're not gonna release anything until we're like completely and utterly satisfied. And we we just like we're not gonna release anything until we're ready. And like right now, we're just like we don't feel ready, and we're doing a lot of time. We're spending a lot of time like working on ourselves and figuring out what we want. Um, and, um, we have songs, which is cool. Um, and I don't know if those songs are going to six months from now. And when you put out an album, like that's forever. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And ultimately, like, I'm really proud of the fact that myself, the members of my band, um, you know, Joel, um, other people, you know, Jake from counterintuitive, like everybody that's kind of like become a part of this village. Cause like, it really does take a village to like support a band Mm -hmm. and to make something like this work. Um, We've built an incredible infrastructure Mm -hmm. um, for like getting to do things on our terms. um, As far as touring and doing merch, um, you know, like I don't uh, ultimately like, man, like I don't answer to anybody. um, And that's, (laughs) that's like the biggest goal at the end of the day to me. Like I care what our booking agent thinks. I care about his opinion Mm -hmm. because he's a very, very smart guy. And he's really, really good at what he does. But ultimately, if we disagree, I'm going to do what I want. And I'm going to do what I think is going to make me and my three best friends the happiest. That's what I care about. And ultimately, like, I didn't, that didn't translate into the writing. And that wasn't true for how I felt about writing for, like, the last few years Mm -hmm. um, since, like, Best Buds came out. And I'm trying to fix that. And I'm trying to get back to a point where I feel like I can just do whatever I want and, like, trust myself. And uh, that takes work and it takes a lot of it takes a lot of unlearning um, to do that. And it mm-hmm. takes a lot of, um, you know, like I'm not a very confident person. I'm a very insecure person, I'm a very withdrawn person. Um, and being in this band and making this machine work has forced me to like go against a lot of that and really come out of my shell and like kind of um, put on and like create this personality for myself that didn't exist before. I feel that. Um, and it's a, it's a weird way to live your life. And I feel like I've just, I haven't been living for myself and that's like a weird place, um, to be in. Um, especially when you, you know, you have people like walking up to you and being like, Oh, like I so resonate with like, you wrote this or like that. And I'd, I'd really like to be able to, um, like be present in that moment and really be able to feel like I still resonate with those things and feel like I still agree with those things. And that's something that I'm trying to think about with this album. And that's something that I'm trying to think about for the future. Um, and yeah, because ultimately like whether it's my job or not, I don't really care. Like, I just know I want to be in this band forever. Um, yeah. I'm ultimately like not, I'm not really concerned if it keeps paying the bills forever. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a smart kid. Like I'll figure something out. Like everybody else in my band are very, very smart and very, very capable. Yeah. If, if mom jeans like stops paying the bills like one day, like, cool. Like, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. Um, I just want to keep having fun. And I know that if I don't have, like, this one thing in my life to, like, keep me going and to keep me interested, um, I'm going to have, like, a hard time, um, like, getting through life and, like, really understanding what my purpose is. So um, this album is, like, very much going to be the manifestation of that. And I'm really just (laughs) asking that people, you know, like, be patient with us and kind of understand that, um, you know, like ultimately at the end of the day, like, though it might sound a little weird, like I didn't, like, we didn't ask for any of this and I didn't ask for any of this. Like we just, we wanted to put out an album and go on a tour. And we did that in the summer of 2016. Um, So everything after that, that, you're on bonus rounds. Everything (laughs) after that is just, is just gravy. And you know what I mean? And, 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 and at some point, like you don't have to eat your entire birthday cake. You know what I mean? Like you can eat, you can eat as much of it as you want and you don't have to, you don't have to keep doing anything if it's not fun and you don't have to keep doing anything if you're tired. And, um, I'm trying to remind myself that right now and where I'm at is like, I don't want to open for anybody else, man. I just like, I want to play mom jean shows and I want to play, I want to tour with my friends and I want to like, I want to see grad life be successful and I want to see just friends be successful and I want to see honey TV be successful. And I want to see, um, my friends, uh, careers take off and I want to see everybody happy and healthy. And like, ultimately that's a lot more important to me than like making money or like getting attention or like getting to play in front of more people. Um, you guys have, that's kind of, that's the vibe with the new record at least. (laughs) 
<laughs> in a nutshell. Long way to answer. <laughs> no, no. For that, but. I, I totally hear where you're coming from, and I think that I I think that's in the right spot. Like I think you're definitely coming at it from the right perspective. It's got to be for you. It's got to be what you guys like and want to hear. And if that's what you're getting back to, then it's only it's only going to be amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, ideally, yeah. You guys have an amazing support system uh, with each other. Uh, all the bands that have each other's backs out there, like Rad Life, like P Daddy, like Just Friends. You know, all even though you guys aren't all in the same exact uh, geographical location, for you guys to have such a a, a network uh, like Honey TV, which by the way. We've we've seen the lore chart and it's a bit hard to follow. I I can't even <laughs> I can't it's even. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> but it's a but lot. it definitely seems like you guys like, you know. I I really loved what you said about really all you care about seeing is everyone else be successful and all your friends be successful and have a great time because it's like. If you guys are are doing that, what's the what else is there? You know what I mean? If you can have yeah. that, it's like. You don't need anything else. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Totally. And also, and I think for me, like me being happy and me having a good time, like that's what that looks like is like people around me having a good time and like me feeling like I'm doing something that matters and doing something that is positive and doing something that's productive. Um, And yeah, hasn't felt like that in a while. And I want to, I want to get there again. It's really cool that you can like self reflect like that and just take a step back and realize what you need to like make yourself happier, Mm -hmm. which will result in, you mean, yeah, you know, the the therapy and medication is, is amazing. So <laughs> <laughs> do recommend. Amazing what I, what taking some time for yourself uh, can really do. And that's mm-hmm. a, that's what that's what I'm trying to do and that's what we're trying to do now. So that's like almost against what a lot of it seems like a lot of current pop culture is about, where it's like you guys just gotta grind stuff out. Like you just gotta like no time uh, for yeah, like you can't you just stop go, go, go. like at three hours yeah, of sleep and night. I don't know, man. For what I was ta- I was talking about this with my buddy yesterday, dude. Like we're potentially the last generation on Earth that's like going to get to do anything fun. That's going to like actually be able to like go outside and like do anything cool. And so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna enjoy that. Like I'm gonna live it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna Uber eats myself to death. I'm gonna have <laughs> I'm gonna have a time in my life before this like technology machine ultimately like comes full circle and like bites us in the back and like, you know, and we become like this crazy dystopian society that I know is going to happen in the next like hundred years. Like I'm trying to ride the wave and have a good time with my friends before that happens. So, um, you know, sometimes like making that happen can be a grind. And I definitely don't think that anybody should like shy away from hard work. Like tour is hard work and making an album is hard work. And I think like really, trying to make sure that you are achieving or like producing the best quality work that you can is like really, really difficult and is really exhausting. But I think that like you deserve to pick and choose what those things are for yourself. And I've, I've allowed other people to define that for me for a long time. And, um, it's, it's important, I think for myself and for any other bands out there, I think to also like, remember like why you are doing it and like why you started your band in the first place. Um, and like why you're even like alive and existing um, for the first place. And those are questions that I think a lot of us like don't like to, to think about, right? Like it's obviously easier to just put your nose down and keep working. Um, but at least for myself, like I'm noticing that like that's not working and like it's all good and, and well until you like burn out and you realize that you can't just like keep working that hard anymore. Yeah. Um, and I think like trying to be self-aware and trying to give yourself, um, you know, I'm, I'm super lucky that I have people around me um, who care and who can notice uh, when I'm burnt out and when I need to take a step back. And like the biggest, like the coolest thing and the biggest thing that I have to thank is like my band is like so supportive and like so nice and so cool, you know, like, like Austin could be poking me in the back and being like, well, you know, I want to go on tour and I want to make money and like, I want to do this and I want to do that. Um, and you know, Bart and Sam could be talking about all the, all the opportunities that we're missing out on. And our agent could be talking about all the things, tours that we're not getting and stuff, but like, nobody's doing that. Everybody's really, really being nice and, um, giving me the space that I need. And, um, you know, reminding me that like, we're all in this together as a team and that like my happiness and my enjoyment is important too, not just uh, making the machine go. Um, and that's like, that's really, really cool. And that's just like, for me, that's a testament to just like, if you surround yourself with with good genuine people 
um, even even when stuff gets like really really hard and when stuff gets really really bad, um, you're going to have that safety net there, um, which ultimately is like the biggest thing I have to be thankful for. That's amazing. That's so amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I actually want to I actually want to touch on a little bit of um, when we went to see uh, your show. You guys talked about uh, something that was very important to you guys that I had never considered. I know none of my other friends who were there at the time considered. And it was uh, epilepsy-friendly lighting that you had at your show. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, when you guys explained it, it was like, oh, that's obviously. It was was like a no-brainer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it was something that I feel like people don't consider very often. I've never been at a show and been thankful for the flashing lights shining in my eyes. It's never had to do it anyway. So I don't even know why it's really there. I've never been like, oh, awesome. Now the strobe light's on. I can't see anymore. Oh, this is great. So... Uh, so what what was like the primary I mean how did you guys arrive at the point where you're like this is something we have to do this is something we feel strongly about I mean I think like the flashing lights thing is part of a a larger issue um, like the broad spectrum issue of like accessibility at shows which is obviously something that's like super important and like you can talk about wheelchair accessibility um, you know we can talk about gender neutral bathrooms we can talk about lighting um, all that stuff Um, so accessibility in like general has always been really important to me. Um, there's like two ways to think about it. It's like morally, I, I just think it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like if I, if I was someone who was differently abled and like, you know, had difficulty walking or like couldn't handle stairs. Um, or if I was somebody who was, you know, trans and not comfortable using either bathroom, um, you know, that would be important to me. And those would be reasons why I wouldn't want to go to a show. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't want somebody who likes our band to not be able to come see us because of a dumb reason like that. Like, I think that's just like a really bad reason for somebody to miss your show, you know, um, yep. or, or bad reason for somebody to just like not have a good night. Like that's a yeah. night ruiner, you know, and that's yeah. just like it takes and it's like it's traumatic for some people. And I just want to prevent that. Um, the light. Um, are a big part of that. Uh, I don't like flashing lights at all to begin with. I think that they're pointless. Um, I think that people who use flashing lights and crazy light shows don't want to move around on stage and don't play interesting music. And that's why they do crazy lights. Um, so if you are, um, old and tired and you want to just stand up there and not move around and have your stage still look cool, <laughs> that's fun. This is your However, fifth um, <laughs> bro, yo, you know what, man, if, if hip hop artists can have an empty stage with one DJ and one guy on a mic yeah. and like put on an interesting show and still be animated and still be exciting yeah. and not have to do crazy life, like your your freaking punk band doesn't need strokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you well, well, there's the hip hop. It's it's either you know I mean? it's either two dudes or it's thirty five people <laughs> and, and, uh, on stage and, and, they're, and now they're wilding. <laughs> <laughs> Other genres of music, I think, like, I, it's not fair for me to speak, like, on that because, like, accessibility at, like, huge, like, pop events and, like, huge hip-hop shows and stuff like that, you know, like, those shows are, are inherently inaccessible to begin with anyway, right. right? So, like, I don't think it's worth arguing about, like, different genres, but, like, punk shows, we're supposed to be, like, punk rock and DIY is supposed to be, like, the embodiment of accessibility, and it's supposed Bro. to be, like, a safe place where everybody is welcome, and I think... Like having, not even having flashing lights, but not being willing to have a conversation about flashing lights and how that affects people, um, I think just like goes totally against that. So yeah, I don't think it's interesting. So I don't have any reason to play, to put flashing lights. Now when we show up to a venue, like the show that you guys were at, there's somebody who we don't know who works for the venue doing lights. And so we have to tell them. Because for whatever reason, it's like the industry standard that you want strobes because everybody, everybody thinks it's like a nightclub for some reason. Um, but you have to tell them every day and it's like a big deal. And like we really now, like there's like I pushback? am proud of the fact that we can advertise the fact that our shows are strobe sensitive and that awesome. our shows are epilepsy safe because it saves, I mean, it saves me time people don't have to message me or like email me and ask, um, you, they, they can know. And, you know, I have to hold sound people and like people accountable for that now because we're telling people like, you're going to be safe if you come to these shows. And that's just like, it makes people feel seen and it makes people feel validated. And it's a really small and easy thing to do. 
Um, and um, I want to shout out uh, Ellie Hart and like Lead DIY, which is like an organization run by uh, her and uh, Hannah. Um, they brought this issue, like the specific issue to my attention and kind of like talked to me about it and made me more aware of just like how m- many people it really does affect. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not even light sensitive. Like I'm, I don't have epilepsy or anything, but like it's tiring. <laughs> Especially yeah. if you're already at a la- loud show where your ears are getting assaulted the whole time, like yeah. I don't need crazy lights. Like you know what I mean? It just it just it makes the whole experience less enjoyable, mm-hmm. in my opinion, which is one level of it. And then on top of that, even if you don't care, um, if you you know it doesn't matter to you, then I think the fact that it makes it literally unsafe for some people is yeah. just, it's a no brainer and it's a really easy way. And the biggest thing, and again, it's, you know what, man, if, if kids in their like basement shows, if kids who are throwing shows in their mom's basement <laughs> and collecting 20 bucks on door and, you know, splitting that between four bands with four members each can put on a show and not have flashing lights and have it be accessible. <laughs> like, I think that you're like crummy little bar yeah. in Nashville or you're like whatever little rock club that you're like, you know, think that you're so high and mighty for letting us play here. Like, I think you should at the bare minimum be able to handle that. Um, <laughs> like, what's the best case scenario if there's flashing lights? Like, it, it's like, there's really no argument. It's like, either we have flashing lights and half blind everybody, or we don't, and everyone has a better time, and more people can well, come out and have a better it's time. It's like the thing that you're like... Yeah, a like, lot of the times, we'll just send the light guy home, oh. and we just... Um, <laughs> And that's an easy way. Um, if, I, if if he still wants to get paid, we'll still pay him. And we'll just like, we're going to have Joel do lights. And then Joel literally like, and then Joel just waves his hand over the light board. And it's like red lights in between bands and white lights on the band. That's and that's incredible. it. That's awesome. That's it. That's that, now that is punk rock. Like yeah. that's the most yeah. punk rock. And he's doing it all with a fanny pack. On. Just think about that. <laughs> no, ideally we could we could we could do an entire show with like no one from the venue being there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's ideally. the goal. That's, that's the really, idea. That's a... <laughs> ideally, the only people. Ideally, nobody's like nobody who works for the venue is doing anything, and they're just like telling us where to put stuff. Yeah, um, that makes sense. That's the way we like. Because you don't have to like deal it. with like the incompetent people that come up every now and then. Yeah, like, you can yeah. Just do it and it's, I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be disrespectful or like assume that people are going to be bad at their jobs right no, off the no. bat. But like most of these people that work at these venues just have like no idea what they're doing, and they don't care. <laughs> and so it's like, it's yo, coasting. dude, like that's my, that's my, you know, like thousand dollar guitar that you're like tossing onto a rack like how about you take a little bit of care there bro so i don't like people touching my stuff like i'm a little bit ocd about that and i just know that so we try and keep things as in-house as possible and it's just like it it prevents a situation where like i have to like say something into the mic or be like you know like hey man how about you stop flashing those freaking lights in front of a room full of people and then create this uncomfortable you know confrontation that's not fun for anybody it's like you said it's all about having fun and if the, it's about yeah. you having fun on stage and the audience is having fun in the crowd and like that's what it's all about. Yeah, so and, and I can't I can't have fun that. if I feel like people's safety is in danger. Exactly. And it's the same deal. Like if a, if a security guard is like roughing somebody up or there's a fight in the pit, like you stop the show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because like people's ultimately people's safety is like more important than like your little rock band. Yeah. Like I, I I feel that I feel that people's safety is ultimately like more important than like me getting to play my song. So like we can always we can always click 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 and start over. You know what I mean? Like you always start the song over. Like there's never there's always another gig. Yeah. Like, that's the thing yeah. that I always try to remind myself is like there's always another gig. Like today isn't the isn't the end all be all. You know tonight is not the night. Tonight doesn't have to be the night <laughs> that everything goes right and that everything goes crazy tonight. Tonight doesn't have to be your night. And that doesn't mean it's my night either. Right. It means that it tonight is just a night that exists and we would all like to get through it as comfortably and by getting the most enjoyment as possible and everybody not being an idiot, like really, really helps that. <laughs> Bro, I, I vibe with that so hard. Yeah. I, so you, you talk about being on tour. It sounds like, it, it does sound like a lot of fun, and it sounds like it's one of the high points, if not the highest point for you guys, to get to all hang out, the camaraderie of it, uh, being on the road and hanging out. It's like the most, I think, at least mom jeans probably sees of each other because you guys kind of live far away. Yeah. It, it, it's and, the most tangible, I think, thing yeah. that you do that like makes you feel like yeah. you're, you're, doing, you're doing the thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we actually have the the song that we played on the intro. 
Uh, I don't know if you could hear that on on the other line, but I, I did. I actually I was like, "What song is that?" <laughs> oh, really? It's a uh, well, it's titled Saturday Trey. It's by Saturday. Sa- Saturday Trey. No, Saturday. It's but, Saturday. <laughs> by a band uh, cool. that's around here called Food Truck. Yeah, they're in our local scene, and and they're actually huge fans of you, actually, which is why they, we played oh, cool. their, their song on the intro. And uh, they Wait. they are gearing up for a tour themselves. They just released an EP. It came out with another uh, few songs recently, and uh, they were actually wondering if you guys had any uh, tour knowledge to drop on them to prepare them for the road. Mm. First tour? First yeah. tour, yeah. Yeah. Mm. If I, like, don't be afraid to call your mom. <laughs> like, for real. Um, Yo. <laughs> No, that's like a big thing. Um, I know like tour tour can be really exciting and really cool for those reasons. And the fact that like you feel really independent and really on your own and you're doing your own thing, which is like, that's really cool. Like not trying to take that away from anybody, but like, again, like what we just said, like ultimately like your safety and your life is more important. Um, like not to get dark, but out there, like on, like people like literally die on tour. Um, I've, I've lost friends. Um, I know people who have lost friends. Um, people who have, um, you know, crashed their vans, gotten into situations, not been safe. Um, even just other people who aren't safe, get them into situations that, you know, they didn't foresee. And I think like ultimately remembering, um, that like you and your crew and their safety and their lives, that's the most important thing. Like no show and no, uh, you know, no merch, uh, pickup or no snow, like driving through no show is no, no, no show is worth risking that. And no tour is worth risking that. And the same goes for mental health, too. Um, I think that if, uh, you know, you get out there and you realize that it's a lot more work than you thought, um, call it. Go home. Call, call it, it a yeah. day. Like, there's there's always another show. There's always another gig. Um, unless you hurt yourself. Or unless you burn yourself out to the point where you never want to do it again. Exactly. Or you traumatize yourself. And I think that that's the important thing. Like, we were really, really lucky. I don't mm-hmm. want to shy away from the fact that, like, Mom Jeans has been extremely fortunate mm-hmm. um, in the fact that... Um, you know, first of all, we booked good tours because I was lucky to have friends that helped me book really good tours. Yeah. And on top of that, like we just had a lot of luck. There was a lot of situations that ended up going in our favor. And if they had not gone in our favor, like it could have been very potentially like the end of our band. That's crazy. And I think that being aware of the finality um, of what you're doing, obviously, I don't think that you like fear should cripple you or should stop you from doing <laughs> anything right. Like yeah. there's a certain amount of danger and there's a certain amount of risk involved with just leaving your house, period. Um, <laughs> but I think that there is, um, ultimately remembering that yet, yeah, yeah, like no show or no tour, no gig, no, uh, you know, no one release, like no one thing that you think is like the end all be all for your band is like going to be more important than like your lives. Uh, your safety or your friendships. And so keeping those things um, at like the most important thing, like I don't think you can really go wrong. And that's, you're going to have like such a good tour um, if you are like, you know, paying attention to your body and paying attention um, to your friends and making sure that just everybody's taken care of and getting what they need. Um, and then even, the, even if your show is crappy, who cares? You're on, you're on tour, man. Yeah. You're, you're hanging out with your friends, you know, like you're doing the thing. And you know how many people were at the first like shows that Mom Jeans played? Like fuck, like two, three people at every show. <laughs> really? And I was I was I was on top of the freaking world, man. That's I awesome. could not be happier. It was the best feeling and like obviously like it didn't like I didn't stop. Like I couldn't get enough. Yeah. Obviously. Uh so um <laughs> you know, um yeah, just keeping your safety and making sure that you're you're happy and, and you're healthy and you're taking care of yourself, that's the most important thing. Bro. So basically just make sure there's a second tour. The, the goal of your first yeah. tour should be that you're okay to do a second tour. <laughs> that's that's not crazy. even not even that. It's like make sure that like you are you you're, you exist <laughs> to do a, another tour. For make sure, sure that you get home in one piece For so sure. that you can do another tour. I, I think we really I really do think that we devalue um getting home in one piece. Well it's also on a tour. glamorized I, too to have like a reckless time on tour, you know, like in popular culture. You know, for uh, bands, or maybe I don't. I don't. Be. I personally don't understand that. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that's really yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know anybody that likes to torture themselves. Yeah. Um, but uh, we call it punishment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, if 
ultimately for me, you like, I don't mind that stuff because hanging out with my friends is like what I like to do. Yeah, for and sure. even if you're hanging out with your friends in a crummy situation, you're still hanging out with your friends. Um, so know. that's kind of cool. But yeah, I don't think, I think there, there's a difference between like having bad things happen to you and like being reckless. Yeah. And I don't think that you should be reckless. That's and I don't right. think that you should invite danger. Like you're going to have enough crazy stuff happen to you. You can be the most boring band and with the most boring people that stuff's gonna in the happen. entire world. And you're going to have, you're going to have stories. Like that's just the <laughs> truth. Like that's just the reality of it. Like just the being in the places that you have to be going on a tour, like enough crazy stuff is going to happen to you. So like, don't force the crazy to happen. Just let it happen and enjoy it when it does. Wow. And you know, that's my vibe at least. That's crazy. Dude. Bro, you, you bring such a perspective that I feel like is just like, it is so punk rock. Like, at, at like, like being safe and like and 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 accommodating and having fun and caring about what you're doing and the art like all these things like that is at the essence like you said earlier of what it really means uh, to be a part of that scene and uh, I just I just love everything you said you know what I mean like I think it's I think it's refreshing and I think it's stuff that people don't talk about enough and people don't give enough uh, consideration to. And that there's just not enough uh, care for those things, you know, that you guys obviously care so much about. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And I mean, I'm not the only one that that feels this way. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. I'm sure you're aware of this, too, that most of the people I think that hold the attitudes that I hold, like they're out there doing it right now. Like yep. they're crushing, they're eating dirt, yep. touring in their vans to nobody, making no money. And who knows if their band is ever going to get to a point um, where ours has, where they get the recognition for that. I'm really lucky that, like, I feel very seen with all of this. Yeah. I'm really lucky that, like, people, you know, I didn't ask for this acknowledgement, but it's very nice. Like, it's very, it's very heartwarming that people, you know, have gone out of their way to, like, acknowledge that our music means this much to them. Um, but most bands, like, never get there. Um, I think of even, you know, bands that are, you know, the next generation, like the kids that are coming up behind us, you know, like, like Origami Angel and Short Fictions and like those bands, um, like those kids like have the, those same attitudes too. And like, those are their morals as well. Yeah. Um, I just really, I think most people, when they get to the point where they actually start to get recognition for that, they're just so burnt out and they're so bitter and they're mm -hmm. so jaded mm -hmm. that they don't, um, they don't, the only way that they've been able to survive it is to prioritize making money or to prioritize the few things that they've been able to get out of their band that they still get. Um, and wow. it's hard to, it's hard to like keep looking at the big picture all the time. And like I said, you know, like that's why we're taking a step back now. Um, yeah. it's because I don't want to, I don't want to be 10 years from now looking back, um, realizing that I'd, I'd been a jerk to everybody and that I, um, you know, um, that I wasn't able to, um, at least like, cause it's, it's so easy to just like be honest and to be open and to like have a good attitude. Um, it's just like, you get so exhausted and it feels like the whole world is against you when you're trying to do this. Yeah. And I'm sure that's how every band feels. And, but I'll be honest with you, like that little bit of like care and that really like feeling like you're a part of something that's bigger than yourself. Like, mm -hmm. I think, I think that's literally like the true meaning of community the true yes. meaning of like social interaction, the true meaning of um, like feeling part of a family. Um, those are the things that exist in the music industry or still exist in parts of the music industry that I don't think really exist anywhere else in the capitalistic world. Um, and that's why I think it's so important for me that I've like found music and it's so important for me to like not let myself get swept up into that other stuff. Um, because I think this is one of the, the few places um, the few communities like left where people are making the conscious decision that being a good person and creating a safe, welcoming environment that's comfortable for everybody is more important than feeling cool or feeling important or feeling, you know, uh, feeling empowered. So yeah. I, I'm just going to echo the same sentiment that Chandler said a couple of minutes ago. Like you've, you've said so much awesome stuff. I like, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to wrap up. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> but uh, if you'd like, you'd stay on the line uh, after we wrap, and then we can formally, you know, say our goodbyes. And uh, uh, but uh, sure, yeah. totally. If you have uh, anybody you want to shout out quick, though, that'd be a perfect time. Oh, I mean, 
Shoot. Shout out to my whole gang. I mean, like, whole mom, she's crew, obviously, like, Bart, Sam, everybody, Joel. Um, I want to say thank you to my parents. I don't know if they will ever listen to this. Um, they probably will not. Um, I guess I just, anybody who, like, cares about our band or has listened to us or, like, takes the time um, to, like, be a patron uh, of our music in whatever way that is, whether it's streaming or buying albums or coming to shows or whatever, just um, thank you. I understand that you don't have to do it. Um, nobody has asked you to do it. Um, and the fact that um, people still like things enough to go out of their comfort zone and to seek each other out and uh, to you know leave, leave the house and, and go to a show and see a band they've never seen before um, gives me hope for the future and gives me uh, gives me a reason to get out of bed every morning. Um, and without without that community um, and without people being nice and like really um, responding to that, like I wouldn't have. Um, as much of a reason to keep doing this band and I wouldn't have as much of a reason to uh, uh, keep uh, keep doing this thing. So I really am appreciative for that. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today and thank all of you for watching and listening. Poorly Edited Podcast signing out. Thank you so much. Have a great night. I'm okay, 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 I'm ok